So, welcome to the first part of this series where we'll be making a Souls-like game. Okay, I'm going to imagine you know what a Dark Souls game is, you have played the games, and you know what we are going after. This is going to start entirely from scratch, and also for each part, check the descriptions if there is uh, something that you will have to download before we start, then you will find links in there. For example, in this one where we're going to tackle the animations and the animator and stuff like that, you'll have all this in the description. Now, concerning the animations, most of these are edited from uh, the Romocap data. Okay, but other stuff like the attacks are entirely made by me. So that means they are not really uh, something uh, you know, they're not really professional quality, but at least it's something we can all use and share to be able to follow along. I imagine, of course, you're going to want to share this stuff or, well, you know, uh, change them in your own game. So not everybody is going to have the same ones. Okay, we have a few other stuff, but we're going to see them all later. Now, to start, this might start entirely from scratch, as you can see. But that doesn't mean it's also going to be at beginner level. We're going to be going pretty fast with a lot of this stuff. And we're also not going to, yeah, it's more targeted towards intermediate to advanced users. So if you're having problems following along, then make sure that you have, you know, the basics and the fundamentals. You have a solid base. So. The first thing, of course, we need to do for, well, a game that, uh, like Souls, okay, is based heavily upon animations. So, so that means the first problem we have to tackle will be the animator controller. So we're going to create a new folder. Let's call this animator controller. Oops. And then we're going to create an actual uh, animator controller and we can call this uh, let's go with humanoids because we might have other uh, animations and other types of characters this is of course a humanoid uh, but as you might have seen of course monsters and stuff like that don't have a rig uh, that's human based they will have their own generic rigs so we will have to change the controller there a little bit okay so we have one controller Let's create a few masks. So for example, I want a mask for the right hand. And I'm going to select all of this, deselect all of them and enable this. I'm going to create a new one for, well, let's just duplicate this and let's call this left hand. And this is going to be your mask for the left hand. Okay, we need all this we need one that is going to have both of our well you know both of our let's just duplicate this both hands and let's enable uh, oops let's enable all this okay we have this ready so let's go with our humanoid and let's go over here i'm going to create three or four layers we're going to name them a bit. So this is going to be, let's go with right hand, left hand, and then we're going to go with both, or maybe name it both hands. We might not need in the end both hands, we'll see. And this one will be override. So let's set up our layers. Uh, right hand, add the mask, uh, for the left hand, add another mask, for the, for the both hands, add the other mask, and the override all doesn't need any masks, because we want to basically override everything. We can tick OK pass, but it most likely if we are revolting, if, if we are falling into this override uh, layer, that means we don't want even the arcade to play. So, 
to each all of the layers instead of the base layer we're going to have to use an empty layer so let's create the empties Oops. and I'm just going to call them empty although yeah instead of just calling them empty I'm going to create empty and then the name of the layer and uh, this will come into play later when we are going to be jumping through animations empty both and you will see and you probably notice that I haven't yet played with with my layer weights okay empty left and this one is empty oops empty right okay and we have our base layer where we're going to work with our locomotion now a game like Dark Souls will have two basically two types of locomotion one will be uh, when you are normally walking around and one when you are uh, where, when you are locked into into an enemy or something like that uh, so let's go with the blend tree for starters and uh, let's do this locomotion or better yet locomotion normal we might get away with using only one blend tree but we'll see and I'm just going to go all this vertical and I'm going to create another one which I'm going to call horizontal okay uh, let's go with only one directional at this point and we'll see in the future if we want to handle this a little bit uh, differently so I'm going to take this and I'm going to go into my locomotions and you will see that we have a few of animations I'm going to use OH idle which is this which is going to be our idle and I want to add a working one uh, let's make sure this is the correct one yeah this is the correct one but I want the threshold to be at 0.5 and then I'm going to add one more which will be the jogging jog forward okay now this is uh, looks a little bit you know slower than what it can be so we can change this to 1.3 so he know he feels a little bit like he's moving around so okay this is going to serve as our base basic locomotion let's write one helper script we're not going to eventually use this oops let's be a little bit more organized and let's create a folder called the scripts and uh, let's just call this utilities and i'm just going to call create a new script and uh, let's call this helper let's open it up let's wait till it's open so basically this will just help us pass values to the animator I'm not going to worry about actually let's just add a namespace doesn't matter namespace okay and we need our animator And of course, we also need the component animator. Okay, let's create a public float, but let's also create a range, and that will be between zero and uh, well, one should probably be fine. Let's call this. Uh, let's just go with vertical. Doesn't matter okay and for right now let's just do set float vertical vertical oops come on okay let's drop it over here we don't have to do anything else uh, for right now because we just want to work with the animator so I'm going to take my game scene and put it over here we don't really care who for it so let's also drop the helper over here we need to assign an animator so we're going to go with humanoid 
Okay, and I'm going to hit play. And we're going to go with the vertical. Okay, with this we can control and we basically can debug how everything else is going to look. Now, let's go into models. To the items, we have a Viking sword. This is from the Blacksmith demo. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this, go into his right hand quickly. We don't have to be uh, at this point really diligent. We were going to create tools actually to help us place items and stuff like that uh, quicker, like we did on the third person shooter series. But for right now, let's just we just want to visually uh, work with the project a little bit. Okay, something like oops, something like this will just be fine. Hitting play again. Okay, you will see that when we are running, you can see that this isn't going to cut it. This is really awful. Okay, we don't want to have something like this because even if you're just walking, you can see that it just feels way unnatural. So to fix this, we're going to go into our layers, into our right hand, because he's holding the right hand, and I'm going to create Instead of creating, I'm going to just go into my locomotions and then go get my one hand idle over here. For right now, I'm just going to set this as the default state of this layer. Okay, and I'm going to take, before I do anything with my weight, keep in mind that weights are kind of bugged in Unity. So I'm going to just go into my animator controller and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call it backup just in case because sometimes when you mess with the weights you might actually need to recreate the whole controller from the start or basically delete the entire layer okay it has been this way since for a very long time okay so I'm go I'm basically setting on the right hand weight layer to one let's see the difference right now you can see the hand. Of course, it's the same animation when he's on idle. And you will also see one more thing that his feet are kind of floating. To fix this, you can go into the base layer, locomotion normal, and then click uh, foot OK. It's not foot OK that it's uh, that, you know, make him actually adapt to the terrain. It's basically just fixing his feet into place. And that didn't work for some reason. And yeah, let's see. Maybe it was it's on the animation side. Let's see. Oh, one hand idle. Yeah, it's probably that, or it's probably the looping pose. We'll see. Yeah, probably something like that. Anyway, let's ignore the the fit for now okay we are over here we have our layer on the right hand and we're going to start working and that's what I said that the layers don't actually work or we are we forgot to assign the layers it's on you so we have our layer to one okay let's go over here oh maybe we actually yeah we were on the on the on this the changes we did were on this one, so this uh, is the one we actually want. I'm going to hit play, and yeah, you can see his ha his legs are a little bit more on the ground, stable. Okay, we start walking. You can see that his hand stays uh, right in there, so this is of course something that we can actually use. And if we're running, you can see that his hand, of course, stays there now you will see though that this is still pretty stiff okay it has a few issues so what we can make to do this a little bit less uh, well you know so that it's not that uh, apparent we can basically just lower the the weight on this so for example we can if we do uh, let's go with 65 
Boxman and then start running. You will see that we are actually introducing a little bit of uh, the animation into our layer. Now, this might actually be a little bit too much. Let's see on this. Yeah, we want something a little bit less. Now, never change the weights while on runtime. As I said, they tend to break more than they should have. Okay, but feel free to experiment and make sure that it's something you look. Okay, so this uh, feels a little bit more natural. We have a little bit of uh, the animation on our right hand. So this is far more better. So as you can imagine, because our attacks are like this, we're going to use the override layer and I'm going to set this at one and we're going to use the override layer to basically play any attack animations we have. So what I'm going to do is take all this, drop them in here. We have our three. Uh, well, actually, we also have uh, 200 attacks. So it doesn't matter. So let's go on to our helper script and let's create one more thing. We're going to call this. We're going to create a new string and we're going to call this animation name. And let's also call this, make this public boolean. And we're going to say uh, play anim. And inside update, what we're going to do is if, well, actually, let's just see, let's make it on top. If anim play, come on, oh, play anim. Play anim will be false. Vertical will be also false because we're going to attack. Let's just reset it. And of course, we want to do either a crossfade or play. If we do play, he's going to go to jump into that uh, animation. So it might not look that great. Uh, or it might be something you actually need. Depends. Okay, so we have animation name and transition duration 0.4 or maybe 0.2, since this is an attack animation, should work. So, we need to go over here. So, what we are going to do, because we actually want all of this to when they stop playing the animation, and all of these have different lengths. Okay, we cannot just stay over there and manually, uh, for each one have lengths and stuff like that. We just want them to go back into the empty override. So we're going to go transitions back to the empty. Okay. Can't get any simpler than this. And over here, we can write the animation we want to play. So for example, let's go with uh, one. So if I was, oops, OH attack one and now click play animation you can see that he's going to learn to or play the animation over there two two another animation as i said the animations are not something uh, extraordinary okay this is just simple animation and uh, now with some of these animations we can play with uh, their uh, their speed independently or we can make a variable that controls each of these uh, speeds, you know, uh, through one, if you click the parameter over here. And we, of course, we can mirror them. But uh, let's see the both hands. Uh, for the left hand, we don't have something. Uh, we don't really have something right now. So let's just set this to 0.75. You can change this, actually. So let's make this to maybe 0.8 because for the left hand you're probably going to have a shield which means it's going to be more stiff okay and it, it will also break a little bit the uniformly or you know making it likely it's looking identical which is something we don't want but for now since we don't have any animations we're going to have yeah it's just going to play the empty so for both hands Let's go with 0.82 and we have in the animations we have something that's called 
th idle, which is of course 200 idle. And let's create a parameter. We can make it as an integer or as a bool, or we can hard code it. So, yeah, let's go with uh, an integer at least for now. And I'm going to call this weapon type. And I'm going to make a transition and transition back. I'm going to remove the exit time and I'm going to say if weapon type uh, not equals or no or equals. Let's go with one. We're going to leave zero. Actually, yeah, maybe the. Yeah, now that I think of it, let's go with a boolean, just a boolean. Okay, since, you know, it's only 200 or not. 200. 200 true. And then 200 false, you want to go back. Similarly, we don't want to have any stuff from this one. So we're just going to do this. At least for now, this is going to work. Yeah, to true. And then 200 to false. Okay. You can have uh, entirely unarmed where you're not going to play any animations, but that's uh, something we're going to worry about in the future. Okay, not right now. And yeah, we have this too. We have our Lego motion, we have our 200 idle. So let's go into the script again and let's call this. Uh, whoops. Public bull. 200 and in the animations we're going to say let's go the dirty way set bull 200 and whatever we are passing on the 200 is going to be that one okay so here's one more thing we can actually do every time I'm pressing the play animation instead of using a string of the animation name I'm going to just take remove this entirely and I'm going to create an array with strings and I'm going to call this 100 attacks and I'm going to call the, the another array oops 200 attacks okay so when we're actually pressing the animation we're going to start with a target anim and well, let's just go with null doesn't matter and we're going to do a check if we are 200 or not okay else will be this so we're going to get a random integer oops in uh, a random range oops between 0 and what we have on our handed attacks and our length basically okay let's do the same with this but instead we're going to just go with the 200 attacks we only have two 200 attacks uh, so right now we'll basically just say target running will be oh eight attacks and what you have on your random and let's take all of this and let's go back over here and do a copy paste and instead of th uh, oh do th attacks okay and then we're going to play the animation on our target animations so this will basically play a different animation if you are 100 or if you are 200 now this is mostly for example purposes of course we're going to uh, make it so more like souls so we have three attack animations this is our attack animations so I'm going to call this attack attack one two and then attack three 
uh, we only have two animations TH, attack one uh, let's select all of it and attack two okay go back to the scene, play we have a normal and we actually we did the opposite thing we want this to be like this okay if it's not 200 then play the 100 animations play animation selects one and random of course in the end it's not going to be random okay if I click 200 you can see that he's basically two hands his weapon you know exactly like it's doing it on on the sold games stuff like that and if I play the animation right now it's going to play a different animation now there's one thing that it's not quite right okay we don't have any root motion applied so if uh, we basically want the root motion to be open only when we are attacking and we want to control our controller well, in the future without any root motion if I enable this right now and play the animation you will see that it's going to play but we're also going to introduce a little bit of root motion over here which is not something we want okay we don't want any uh, we want to handle the movement by ourselves so this is really easy to fix we're going to go into our animator and our, our override actually let's just go over here and see add a new bool and uh, let's call this attacking although to be more correct uh, let's say call this can move because we can reuse this in a lot of different uh, and other stuff so on our empty override I'm going to click add behavior and I'm going to name this keep bool and I'm using keep bool because I want for as long as I uh, I am inside this state I want the can move to be true if I'm not in this state then I don't really care what uh, yeah I want to handle it everything it's going to basically handle it automatically let's remove any, all of this stuff we only want on state update let's remove this let's make this public string uh, we're going to call this bool name and I'm going to call this bool start so the animator will do set bool bool name and status so for as long as the on state update runs that means whenever this layer is in this one it's going to be turning the the can move boolean to true or false you know whatever you want to use okay can move is here so that means on our script again we can go helper we can say let's make it public so that we can also see it in the inspector enable root motion Uh, let's just go with RM, doesn't matter. And on update, the first thing we're going to do is if enable, uh, nope, enable root motion will be anim get bull. And we have this can move. And we actually want the opposite of this. So it's going to be if you cannot move, then you want to enable the root motion and if you have enabled root motion then that means your animator should be apply root motion will be the same as your enable root motion now we don't have to really do this but if we are attacking then that means we cannot attack uh, again until well uh, until it's finished okay so we can do this like this so we can also do where we are crossfading we can say actually after we have crossfade 
out of this. We can say set bool can move and then do basically hard code it to false. And since we're over here, let's just go with enable root motion to draw. Okay, uh, simple. Close this and on our boxman, we have all of this. Let's close the attacks. We don't need, need them right now. We are playing. And notice the apply root motion which of course didn't work and it didn't work because let's see uh, let's actually see if we are did this correctly okay we are able to move so we have closed the apply with motion okay and yeah probably this doesn't work I think huh. let me think so now it works i'll i'll show you why it, it wasn't working okay we have root motion enabled when we are playing the animations and then we are closing it when we are on the idle uh, that means that we can actually control crossfades and stuff like that from uh, in here from the actual transition which is really really handy because that means we let the animations control uh, when we are enabled or not so that means we let the actual animator have uh, much more power over it okay so if you want to make an, uh, an attack really faster you can just simply change this over here and now the reason why it wasn't working let me open the script let me uncomment this you will see okay I'm going to select my boxman. This stays open. When I'm playing an attack, you can see that this doesn't work. Uh, the reason why it doesn't work is because we are using crossfade. And then even if we are uh, changing this, okay, even if we are turning this to false, the crossfade still keeps frames that place this state. So that means it's just going to turn this again to true. To fix this is instead of doing it over here, we can simply comment this out as well. Okay, it doesn't really matter since we're going to just create a controller uh, through another script. Uh, so we can go over here on state exit and basically say when you are inside the update, you are doing the bool name to this status. If you are out of the state, then where we are going out of the state then change the bool name you are having over here to the opposite of the status for this one it's going to work pretty or if you want to be more safe you can have another one reset on exit i'm going to initialize to true okay so this will only happen if reset on exit is true Okay, so basically this was going to make it to have the opposite of, for the boolean whenever you're going uh, out of the state. So that means when it sees that you are out of the one handed attack and mission, then that means can move will be actually be false. Let's hit play. Okay, boxman, play animation. You will see that this was enabled. And if we go to the scene, play animation and play animation and play animation two-handed play animation start running with while two-handed okay you can see that this runs yeah the animation the hand animation is a little bit off or a lot off but we can fix that with IK in the future 
Okay, right now it's not a problem, so we can keep this as it is. And play animation. And play animation again. Now he didn't, he didn't make it so that uh, he was. Uh, well, you know, he wasn't out of the other animation. That's why you see a little bit of bad blending. But yeah, this is how we work. So that means we have a lot of control through only the animation. So this frees our hands way, way much because we ca you can have as many animations as you want over here. Okay. And yeah, you basically hard code which animation you want to play. So we're going to give on the items the ability to select what animations we're going to play. But we're going to see inventory a little bit further on the videos. So for the first one we actually only did a little bit of scripting but yeah we got familiarized with the animator for the left hand right now uh, we don't have something or we can actually add something i have a few animations over here that could work and let's see we want Uh, that's the flask. Let's see the items. No, that's not what I want. Let's take the use item. Okay, this is on the right hand as you can see. But for right now, let's just mirror it. And on the future, we can change this. We are on the use item. And here's what we can actually do. Uh, yeah, let's make it a transition back since this is kind of a special case. On our boxman, let's go to the script. And let's do public bool, use item. Okay, so here's one more thing we're going to do. We're going to go on. Yeah, this is kind of a hack. It does, you don't have to do it this way. So we're, every frame we're going to be resetting the use item to false. So over here, we're playing animations. We're playing all this. If we are playing the on this frame, if use item is true, actually I want to probably take this a little bit further down okay if it's true then that means play animation will be false play animation will be false uh, the 200 should also be false because we have yeah this might actually not work let's just make this just false so it's going to revert now back to 100 if we were 200 but yeah it won't really matter so i'm just going to do anim crossfade or play it won't really matter as i said in the future we're going to do other stuff use item and actually we can just create a new layer that will only hold stuff like this okay and it's going to reset by itself on the end this is just an example in any case we have it exactly like this we don't need to do anything over here and while playing boxman use item yeah this is kind of bad so we're going to create another layer on top of all of this uh, but before the override uh, let's just call this well, let's call this interactions it won't really matter and for the animator controller we're going to create another one of these another mask and we're also going to enable the well let's just go with the head also and we'll see and let's call all of this upper body so I'm going to take both hands, uh, no, the left hand. The left hand is going to go for the shield, as you can imagine. So on our interactions, upper body, let's go with weight at one. 
and we'll see what's going to happen. Let's create a new empty state. Empty directions. And we can have over here the the script. Use item. And make it go back over here. So similarly, create a new bool. And let's call this interacting. Okay. Keep bool. Interacting. And we have this. Yeah, reset it on exit. And status. Yeah, it's going to keep it false. Okay. So, in our script again, using item, uh, let's just create a new, uh, well, let's go with public, doesn't matter. Uh, let's call this interacting. And the first thing we're going to be doing is basically the same as our root motion. Interacting will be animation get bool. interacting and then instead of use uh, uh, instead of this one over here let's remove this let's put it in here these are going to play just fine but we can take this yeah I guess we also don't need this one as well it won't really matter so we are over here, 200, we don't need to reset it because it overrides the layers. Uh, but what else we can do is if, say if uh, interacting, of course we don't want to play uh, the animations. So we can set this to false. And what else we can do is basically clamp the velocity of the vertical. Okay, from 0 to 0 0.5. So that basically means that if you are using an item, you cannot run. Or of course, there's the other items that make you kneel, stuff like that, which we already have that. Okay, the override doesn't need to be uh, on everything. Uh, just attacks animation. So, let's see. Okay, Poxman. You see, it plays the animation. Maybe the the torso is a little bit too much also. But as you can see, if I'm running, okay, it's going to clamp him back to that. If not, then we can attack. We can change the 200 and it will still play. We can also attack. We can also run. And then attack. Of course, let's say you want to run and you want to attack. We can go over here, play animation, to hand it. And if you are to hand it, for example, uh, if vertical is greater than 0.5, so that means you're probably running, then target animation will be, uh, let's go with, I think, Oh, it's attack three is is launching, is the you know the one that stabs him, or stuff like that. Uh, because it's going to work both for the two-handed and one-handed. Let's go with this one. So just to be sure that this one plays, we're going to remove the one-handed attack, the last one basically. Okay, uh, let's see the attacks. Okay, it's basically this. This is only going to play if we are running. Play animation. Play animation. Okay, these are the two animations we have. Two handed. Play animation. Play animation. He wasn't uh, blended back to the idle. That's why 
there was that problem okay let's say we are running player mission of course you can have roles and stuff like that or you know better animations over here but it doesn't matter 200 and if you are single-handed 200 single-handed and then play animation and he will do the launch attack so i hope you can see where we are going with this we basically set up the whole uh, base for the animator to work with all our well for the most part what we're going to need for a dark souls uh, type of game actually before we end let's go to the layers we have our base layer parameters we still have vertical and horizontal and we can do one more and let's call this lock on and we're going to create a new blend tree and we're going to call it locomotion lock and of course we're going to transition back and forth based on if it's the lock on is true we don't want the x time and again lock on if it's false and we are over here now let's populate this we're going to do use a 2d freeform directional because it has to do with directions and we also want horizontal and vertical uh, now we're going to just go with jogs so we have jog forward we have jog backward we have well, yeah we should probably going to add a little bit more of this we have uh, one hand idle zero zero jog forward will be uh, this one will be at one jog backwards will be minus one and I have some strafes over here but we want to use strafe left jog and strafe left walk yeah so we can use this and we have jog forward jog backwards uh, strafe left jog which will be minus one uh, zero strafe left walk which will also be uh, minus but at 0.5 and now we need to do the the opposite which of course is going to be strafe left jog and strafe left walk with values at 1 0 and this is going to be uh, minus 1 and this one also minus 1 and this will be 0.5 and the vertical will be 0 let's see if the minus one works if otherwise we're going to make it uh, okay he's jogging left he's walking right he is yeah this might actually not work so let's go with speed at one but mirror this okay so this works exactly like we want it we have basically moving back and forth and we can move forward like this and for the most part I think that his legs are fine as I can see so this might actually work there is my, there might be a little bit of crossing around but yeah this will actually work just fine okay so we also have the lock in we're going to fix the head later with a K in most in any case So we have our lock on. Let's go and add this also through the scripts. There's no point to dragging this much longer, so we're going to go fast. We're going to go with public bool lock on. And let's go copy all of this. Okay, and then do a copy paste and instead of vertical. Uh, let's use horizontal and instead of zero let's go from minus one to one and what we're going to also do let's just do it in here it won't really matter uh, if lock on then on the horizontal you don't want anything 
and the vertical should be clamped between uh, well zero and one. You can use that. Uh, oops. If lock on is actually false, actually. Okay. Because if it's lock on, then we want to basically just use the row axis. And where we had the. Yeah. Over here, over here. Adding set float, horizontal, and then will be horizontal. And we also, last thing we need to do is lock on. As I said, we're going to handle this uh, in the future when we have our controller differently, so don't really worry about this so much. This is just uh, you know, an example. But yeah, the animator is basically how the setup of the animator is going to be mostly the same on our final one. Okay, we have our boxman. Vertical. Doesn't matter what I do on the horizontal, I cannot actually change it. We are clamping it. Okay, but if we go to lock on, he's going to walk forward, but we will actually be able to move left and right. So imagine there is a monster over there and we are locking it. Maybe the monster is the sun and maybe he's praising the sun right now. I hope you got that reference. Okay. And the, if this is zero, we are actually moving left and right. So this is actually pretty good. And even if we are in lock mode, the attack animations will still play the same. Okay. So let's end the video over here while praising the sun. So we saw the basic setup for the animator, we saw how we're going to work with the animator, which is a really important part, because the game entirely is based off uh, the animator. Uh, because of the way we have also set up the animator, we're actually going to be able to use it in multiplayer, which of course is going to come a little bit further down uh, the road. Okay, so, yeah, that's it. You know what to do, like, subscribe, Share it with your friends, family, acquaintances, you know, the more visibility we get, uh, the more it helps keep making all of this. And the other way you can uh, support me is through Patreon, which you will also be able to see the videos much earlier than when they are going live. You will also be able to, depending on the tire, you have more rewards. For example, you can get the scripts, you can get discount codes and stuff like that. Okay, and the other way, of course, is by grabbing a project or two through Gumroad so I can keep making all this nice stuff and have it available for free uh, and on YouTube. So, I'll see you next time.